All right, everyone, welcome back to the second half of our update slash zoo tour of uh, Tivoli Zoo. We're picking off, uh, picking up right where we left off, which is in the uh, Toyota Elephant Passage area. We just looked at the, um, we just finished the last episode looking at the gift shop here and the, the public restroom that's up uh, on the top of the hill there. But we're going to continue into the Toyota Elephant Passage. So the first uh, big checklist item in this area that was a giant, giant pain was the uh, top of this snow leopard exhibit. So come in here, you can kind of see the mesh pieces are a little bit wonky when you come uh, underneath. You can kind of see where I had to overlap them in some weird ways. But um, as you kind of zoom out, I keep getting stuck here. Let's see if I can, nope. Ah, good, good, good. Okay. Um, you know, as you zoom out and take a look at it from, especially from the pathway, it totally looks like it's it's realistic. It fits all of the curvature makes sense. Um, it does look like some loose fitting netting, and now this guy can't uh, can't escape anymore, which is great. So, um, very pleased with how this whole area turned out as well. Um, and then. See, oh, I'm gonna save the interior of this other building for last, um, or for almost last. So let's go ahead and go through, I'm gonna cut in here and go backstage. Actually, let's go this way. Okay, so if we head backstage, um, this whole area, if you remember, was completely unfinished. I had blocked in this sort of work building uh, maintenance shed, but none of the details were there. And so I'm actually gonna go out to the street level here outside of the zoo. So I still have tons of details to do out here, but you can get an idea of what I'm going for. So it's gonna be very generic, but I do wanna have like curbing in place and things like that. And then this will be over here on this hill will be um, just the shell of the, the museum, the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Uh, and then the rest of this will be City Park, looking this direction. Um, but yeah, really pleased with how it all looks from outside the zoo. I think um, it, it definitely feels like it's grounded in reality. Again, this is that implied realism, right? I'm not, it's not the most detailed that you're gonna see uh, in this game, but it's enough that it checks that mental box uh, of realism. Uh, so coming in here, just spammed around some some bits and bobs again. This would be a historical building. It was the old it was an old pump house, I believe, uh, that they they couldn't tear down, so they just added on to it for their maintenance shed. Uh, and then coming down here, got more backstage stuff on this pathway as we make our way down to the holding building for the elephant passage, which is still also one of my favorite things uh, in this zoo. So when we head inside here, um, the only real change that I wanted to point out was these stairs. Um, and actually it looks like I need to finish the railings. I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> um, anyway, that'll be just a, just a quick copy and paste. But the uh, the stairs that were here before I got from the workshop and they just were disjointed and they didn't fit and they were super steep. So this is now I think closer to how the actual building functions where either side you can go up these stairs and get a bird's eye view on the elephants as they're inside of their uh, their various holding pens here. Um, so really pleased with how, how all this turned out. And then further making our way down, uh, this is just a waste facility. So I added a compactor in here. Um, you know, some uh, dumpsters and boxes and recycling. And I can't remember if this was in the last episode or not, or one of the last episodes, but just a truck from the, the workshop. Um, and then down here, the other big change was the exterior of this building. So this building would be the holding for the Indian rhinos and the tapirs, um, the Malaysian tapirs. And, uh, I did not do an interior and I'm not going to just because again, you saw when I hit play what my frame rate is like and I don't, I, I wanna just try to get this done and not allocate too many resources to interiors where they're maybe not the, the biggest priority. Um, but this is a, an ingenious design and I'll show you kind of from over here how it allows them to care for the animals. Um, so we come around the building, you've got a stairwell here that you can access and take a look down into these various pens. 
you've got the ability to uh, to help take care of the animals here. You could have a keeper on the outside or a vet on the outside, and then people can watch from above as well. And then you just follow this around. And that's how you can see the other pens if you needed to, to monitor some of the other animals or even just look at some of the animals in the, in the habitat without um, needing to remove them from the habitat or obviously the, the keepers aren't going to go in there with the animals. Um, finish this pathway. So this is how they would get the, the tapirs up to their exhibit in the front here, which we'll go around and look at now. And then there's a space for the keepers uh, to walk alongside as well. I will go down the stairs. All right, so as we make our way out, this is one of my favorite, favorite views uh, in the entire, entire project. So from here, if they're lined up right, you can see, I don't know if we'll see any of them, but you can see uh, if there, there's animals present, you can see the tapir, you can see the rhinos, you can see the gibbons and then you can see the elephant in the background. So um, it's a really, really cool area to be in. I don't know where they all are. Maybe we can hit play for a second and we'll get lucky enough to have some of them come into frame. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite areas, and this is, this is the kind of thing where chances are you may have already made your way through that exhibit, but had you come the other direction through the African Savannah, this is the type of thing that would 100% draw you into uh, into this area and want to go explore further. So you can kind of see the, the elephant peeking in the background there. We got a gibbon up there. We're just missing the, the Indian rhino. So really, really cool design from the folks who, uh, who came up with this um, and how they were implemented to, able to implement it at the zoo. It's still, it's still one of the best exhibits I've ever seen in real life. Not that I'm a zoo expert or that I've seen a ton in real life, but it's just a very, very well designed uh, exhibit. So there's our, our rhinos, they're sleeping over there. All right, um, so we will make our way down into the elephant passage because we were just so intrigued by that view. So down here, we still have our, our amazing little gibbon islands that you can come take a look at and you know watch out. There's actually a funny sign at the Denver Zoo that says something like, entering wet zone or something like that so got to be cognizant of when they're uh when they're right above you um but they're still loving this climbing structure that Wyatt did and uh was able to work out all the kinks so that they don't get um in their you know the box they don't get boxed up so frequently like they used to um coming over here the only major tweak i made is i expanded the terrain in this area so that the cranes could actually make their way down into the water like they do in real life at the Denver Zoo. I'm gonna hit um, play. This is also one of my favorite little scenes uh, in the entire exhibit. It's just a really peaceful area with the waterfall there, looking up. Sometimes you'll get lucky enough to see one of the elephants up there, um, you know, and then obviously if they're spread out, which usually they are, they're, uh, there's usually an elephant in that area as well. Um, so making our way up, this is kind of where I wanted to end on the main work before we transition into what's left and, uh, and what we have to do. So you can see peeps getting stuck on my pass, which is great. Uh, so this interior, uh, is not meant to be, um, I don't think there's any getting around this one. It's not meant to be a one-to-one, -one, there we go, of the actual Denver Zoo. Um, it is it is my interpretation based on the restrictions of the game, right? So we come in, we've got a little bit of, we've got an exhibit queue, which is great because it actually um, draws the people in, almost too many people in here now. <laughs> uh, and then you come around here, you've got the hornbills on exhibit and this building in real life has sunlights um, all over the roof or skylights. And so you kind of peek in and you can see, uh, I tried to do lighting in here to imply that sunlight was coming in through those skylights and helping to light up the exhibits. Um, over here, we've got the fishing cat. Uh, again, not exactly a one-to-one -one of how the, the real exhibit looks, but it's enough to allow the cat to move around and actually enjoy the space while, um, while still kind of implying how it looks in real life. 
And the same thing is true for the uh, river otters as well. In real life, there's actually a little river kind of at, at peep level here that comes comes down into a pool. Um, there's, there's no way to make that functional in the game. Um, and if I would have done that, I would have left a teeny tiny area for them to swim and I wanted to have more space for them to, uh, to move around and swim. And then one of my other favorite features is you swing around here for kids, you know, the ability to kind of come in here and watch the, watch the otters swim and kind of come down into their den level. And then you can see up there, we've got more skylights, uh, to light up the, the habitat. And then my other favorite thing is this right here, you know, being able to come over, I'm gonna see if I can adjust the light a little bit, being able to come over and see, you know, uh, well, that might be as good as it's gonna get. See the elephants uh, on the other side of this and get just such a nice view where you feel like you're almost in the habitat with them. Uh, and, and not only the nice view of this area, but you kind of get teased into the African savanna over there as well. Uh, across the way so really pleased with how this whole area turned out i mean it's peaks to prairie is pretty spectacular and special um this is this area is always going to have um a special place for me in this project as kind of the the crowning jewel just because i poured almost four years into it <laughs> um and you know i think technically from like a technical ability level the peaks to prairie is 100 percent the best exhibit in this zoo um, but this is, if that's 1A, this is like, this is like 1B. So, um, thrilled that this is finally done again, it took forever. I, I was looking back at some old videos and can't believe how long, uh, look, how long ago I was starting like this building. And if you remember, this is like one of the first things I built was this sort of entry gateway into the elephant house, um, which also is still one of my favorite things. So, all right, so let's pop back out into... Um, actually, maybe we'll stay here. So let's go, let's go back out of this direction. And we'll take a look at the transition now and what's left. So I need to do some work uh, to the African forest area. Um, it's still, I had to scale down the building that Lion did. It was just a little, a little too large. Um, so I scaled it down by about 40%. Uh, but kept kept the design. I kept the design as his. I love the design. Um, the only other thing I tweaked was I took off some of the the screens that were on the window, um, just because it seems like Okapi in zoos don't mind the attention. Uh, I was there a few weeks ago, and there was several of them like six feet from people gawking at them. So um, I wanted to open that up a little bit more. One, just because the building is so nice, I like the view of the glass. And then two, when you're actually in the building, the view looking backwards, which we'll save for another episode, uh, is really, really great. And then what what timing to get that shot right there. So I got one of Carlos's skeletons in the, the wall there. Colorado is known for dinosaur fossils, so I wanted to, uh, to put a little nod to that in the zoo where obviously kids would geek out on that when they're on the train ride. Um, so really pleased with how this area is coming together. I still have a lot to do to tidy it up and make it a finished uh, finished habitat. But the idea of having this space here would be, it would draw you over and then the knowing that there's a building there, you see the train coming into the bridge, you see the dinosaur fossil, this would draw you further in. So how do, how do I get over there? Well, I go across this bridge um, and I check out what's on the other side, which we already know is the incredible Peaks to Prairie exhibit. So you can see I've got one of my punch list items here because I'm going to tweak some of this building. It's, it feels a little dated to me from early on in the game. Uh, I did add in a, a quick service restaurant over here, but I think there's an opportunity to improve this interior a little bit. So I'm going to going to be working on that. The one cool thing about this, though, is this um, this quick service restaurant has made more people come and sit down at these tables and eat here. And re even come out here, right? Where now they're actually uh, coming on this patio and enjoying, you know, the African savanna as they might eat lunch. Which is the the whole point of this building is that people, like this, would be one of the biggest restaurant areas where people would come and sit and enjoy lunch and and take in the scenery and the animals. Um, so coming down this way, Peaks to Prairie is pretty much all set. Uh, the I'm gonna go ahead now. I'm gonna go ahead and pop out of the uh, peep view. Okay, so most of this is unchanged. I did what I, I did tweak here is I wanted to make these paths a little more organic. 
uh, kind of like the rest of, of the zoo. Um, so they look a little bit more like a river flowing. I'm going to be changing this whole dining area here. I want to, uh, so one, I added in more details here. So you've got where the train kind of comes down this corridor of those rocks and then across this bridge. And I really want there to be kind of a grand vista here of another uh, kind of dining area where people could come and sit and look out at this uh, at this area where the flamingos are and then, you know, see back into the, the zoo from here. So we'll see how that's gonna flesh out. I gotta look for some more inspiration stuff on like Pinterest and things like that. Um, to come up with that. I'm going to avoid showing you what I'm working on in the hippo area because I want to save that for another episode, but I will take us to where we're headed next. So what I need to do is um, map out this area for BZ. He's a, a member of the Bro Nation Discord and is just phenomenal when it comes to kind of 90s era architecture and in particular with primate exhibits. Um, his climbing structures are in incredible. His details are incredible. Um, I mean, he's, he's, his, his skills go beyond that, but he's in particular, that's like his wheelhouse. And so I, I definitely want him to be involved in this process and um, thrilled that he's willing to do it. And it's going to be a good collaboration. So Primate Panorama is pretty much all that's left when it comes to Tivoli Zoo, other than, you know, fine tuning the details of the, uh, of the African forests. And we'll zoom out even further. So it's not a huge area, um, but it's jam packed with animals. So it'll be, it'll feel a lot like some of, uh, it'll feel a lot like Peaks to Prairie, right? Not a big area, but tons of exhibits, tons of animals. Um, this is to map out where the uh, gorilla and orangutan um, holding building is. And then the orangutan habitat is over here. The gorilla habitat comes over here. And then you've got some additional habitats around the side. And then Eben was kind enough to give me some of his assets from a project he was working on. And I'm gonna create a little kind of modern African village uh, upon the entry into the primate panorama. So that's an example of, like I said, this, this is, we're pulling inspiration from the master plan, pulling inspiration from the Denver Zoo, but I'm also giving myself the liberty and freedom to kind of make it my own and make things, tweak things that I find creatively interesting or, that I think are, are good design, um, or they just are less of a hassle to deal with the game, frankly. So um, so that's that's what's left, this big chunk here, um, which will probably take a couple episodes, you know, knock on wood, you won't have to wait a year. Uh, and then the rest of it is tidying up this city, um, you know, cleaning up the, the rest of the, the city park, which I'm not gonna go too nuts on details. I kind of mentioned this earlier, they're gonna be the, the Museum of Nature and Science over here. Um, this avenue will be lined with kind of craftsman style home facades. I'm just going to be very light on the details to sell the idea. Um, same thing with this road over here. And then thankfully this in real life is a golf course. So I'm going to be able to build up this terrain a little bit to kind of frame in this, this area when, when you're down here, it doesn't feel like you're kind of on this wonky British looking map. Um, and uh, yeah, once all that's done, I will be releasing this file on the workshop. And, you know, I just want to say we'll, we'll come back to the entrance and finish where we started the, uh, the first tour episode. I just want to say if you're still hanging with me um, after four years of this, uh, I can't thank you enough for, um, for watching. You know, if, if this was just kind of going into the void, I would have even less motivation to work on these. But I really do appreciate your feedback and your comments. Um, and, and just watching the videos. And uh, I also want to thank everyone who's contributed to this project, whether it's been one of my guest builders or, you know, just the amazing workshop items that are out there. I mean, people are so creative and uh, being able to have those little set pieces and those little details are what really brings uh, a project like this to life. So um, just thank you all so much. The, the last four years have been really fun to do this. Um, I am, that being said, I cannot wait to be done with this. I am very motivated to finish. Uh, I want this on the workshop. I want you all to be able to see it firsthand. You know, it's, um, we, we kind of joke about quote unquote in person because it's not a real place, but there is, it's totally different to open a file and be able to explore it yourself than it is in watching a video of somebody doing that. 
Um, and so I look forward to the day where, where you'll all be able to, uh, to see this on your own computers. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for, um, for sticking with me for so long and being patient for over a year for another episode. Uh, and look forward to, uh, to showing you what, you're, what we're going to accomplish with the Primate Panorama area. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you all have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon.